भूता भाव्या भवत् प्रभु हरामला कवाश्वाम विज्ञानवशिथम सभा My dear father all that is known to you scientifically because whatever is created in the past whatever will be created in the future or whatever is being created at the present as well as everything within the universe is within your grip just like a walnut purport by his divine grace Sri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhu Brahma is the direct creator of the manifested universe and everything within the universe he therefore knows what happened in the past what will happen in the future and what is happening at present three principal items namely the living being the phenomenal world and the controller are all in continuous action past present and future and the direct manager is supposed to know everything of such actions and reactions as one knows about a walnut within the grip of one's palm <clears throat> the direct manufacturer of a particular thing is supposed to know how he learned the art of manufacturing where he got the ingredients how he set it up and how the products in the manufacturing process are being turned out because brahma is the first born living being naturally he is supposed to know everything about creative functions <coughs> the title of this particular chapter of the second canto of shrimad bhagavatam is the cause of all causes scientific research is very anxious and it has been throughout history to understand the cause of what we perceive through our phenomenal senses within this world in fact education is very much based on trying to understand this law of cause and effect those who study or practice medicine they understand that in order to cure a particular ailment of the body it is necessary to understand the cause of that ailment there is diagnosis there is so much medic medical research blood tests urine tests x-rays so many different ways of examining to understand what is the cause this person is suffering why unless you understand the cause you cannot make a solution similarly in politics in social philanthropy there are so many problems within the society and so much extensive quantities of money and human energy goes into meetings and surveys and studies 
to understand what is the cause? Why do people become, why do young children become juvenile delinquents and criminals? Why do people become alcoholics? Why do people become drug addicts? Unless they understand why, unless they understand the cause, they know they cannot make a solution. And even in our daily family life, whenever there's a problem in our house, we try to understand why did this happen? Because unless we understand, there's no solution. People go to psychiatrists and psychologists for the same reason. What do psychiatrists and psychologists do? Because your mind is deranged and disturbed and it's practically becoming crazy. Rather than just giving you some drugs, which doesn't solve anything, it just somehow makes you cope with the problem because you don't know it's there for some time. But the psychiatrist, the psychologist, they will just talk to you and they'll start talking about your past. Did you ever have this problem? Did you ever do like this? And they go back, back, back as close as they can to your birth. And they investigate everything that you've ever done and every, all experiences and all tragedies and all unhappiness. And through this process, they're trying to understand what is the cause, why this person's mind is so disturbed. And even in athletics and sports, when a team plays, I know this is the way it is usually done, and they lose, they go through all the videos and they go through all these studies to try to understand where did we go wrong, how did we do something wrong, let's correct it. So throughout all fields, of life, there are problems. And there is so much education to try to understand how to find the cause of that problem. But the problem is, as Prahlad Maharaj said, that the solution to these problems are usually creating bigger problems than the original problem. And why is that? Because people have not come to the understanding of the original cause of everything. And this is what Krishna consciousness means. To solve all problems by finally, after millions and millions and millions of births, trying to understand why you're suffering, the cause of suffering, the effects of suffering, <coughs> come to the point of understanding the cause of all causes, then there's nothing more to be known, and then all your problems are solved. Sarvakaranakaranam Bahunam janamanam ante jnanabam mampapadyate vasudeva saravamati samahatma sutmaka After so many lifetimes of this type of research and knowledge, when one finally comes to the platform of real understanding, he knows the cause of all causes is Vasudev Krishna. And from an analytical point of view, we can understand Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's famous statement in this way. He said, the only problem is a lack of Krishna consciousness, and the only solution to the problem is Krishna consciousness. Now this may just sound like a very religious statement, which it is, but it is very, very scientifically based. Everyone is trying to solve problems by understanding the cause of the problem because then you know how to deal with it. But until you understand the cause of everything and how to deal with him, 
There's no solution to any of the problems of this world. But when you understand Krishna, who is the cause of all causes, then all your problems are solved. Because the only problem ultimately is this, that we have forgotten our original relationship with the cause of all causes, with Krishna. We have lost contact <coughs> with the truth. In fact, we have lost contact with our very selves. And in this dream state, we have concocted this dream, this conception that I am identifying with this body and all the byproducts and attachments that are connected to this body. But Krishna in Bhagavad Gita explains we are not this body. We are the eternal soul. And we have an eternal relationship with the supreme soul. And the supreme soul is Krishna. Aham saravasya prabhavo mata saravam prabhartite iti mat pabhajante mam buddha bhava samanivita And Krishna says, I am the source of everything. All material and all spiritual worlds are emanating from me. And the wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all my hearts. In this one verse from the 10th chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita is the highest education, the absolute understanding of the truth, and the means by which we can find real happiness and solution to all the problems of this life. There are <clears throat> essentially three energies. And real knowledge means to understand these three energies and how they are interacting with one another. There is the living entity, or the self, there is material nature, and there is the controller of material nature. We are all being controlled by material nature, because material nature is the Lord's external energy, and he is controlling this external energy. Maya dyakshena prakriti sugite satcharasha. And this, if we identify with material energy, <clears throat> then we are controlled by material energy. And if you identify with Krishna, the spiritual energy, then you are controlled directly and personally by Krishna. <clears throat> it is actually quite simple. But our educational system makes it so complicated because we do so much study and so much research, but we just avoid the basis, the foundation of everything we're trying to discuss. That there are these three energies. There is the living entity. Mamayavamsa jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana manashishtan indriyani prakriti stani karashti. And these living entities are part of Krishna qualitatively one with Krishna and quantitatively an insignificant portion of the Absolute. But due to the conditioning that the living entity is not identifying itself as the servant of Krishna, but identifying itself as the servant of matter, therefore it is being controlled by matter, manashishtanandriyani, due to the mind, due to the mind's misconception we are struggling so hard under the control of material nature. And how does the material nature control us? This is very scientifically explained in the scriptures. In summary, we can understand that material nature is all operating under the power of Krishna in the form of time. <clears throat> and therefore, everyone is under the power of time. And this is a miserable condition. 
because no one wants to grow old, no one wants to get diseased, and no one wants to die. But because we are under the control of material nature, we are helplessly being forced at every second. Whoever we are, we are getting older. And it's a very gradual process, but it's working, it's happening. <clears throat> Sometimes we see uh, our great-grandfather dies, and we remember, and then we see a photo of our great-grandfather when he was just a two-month baby, younger than us. And when we just look back in time, it seems like he went from here to here to here, and it's all been done, it's finished. It all happened, and it's happening to you. And it's happening to everyone. So Krishna explains the real problems of this life are janma mrityu jarajpatyadi dukkha doshano darshanam. An intelligent person sees that birth, old age, disease, and death are the real problems of life. <coughs> not how far is the moon, not how far is the sun, not which political party wins the elections. These are not problems. The real problems are birth, old age, disease, and death. And until you solve these problems, you cannot be relieved of suffering. And this material nature also is comprised of three modes. Sattva guna, Raja guna, Tama guna. And they are always interacting with each other. And they are always pushing us, forcing us, pulling us like ropes to engage in so many activities. And according to the controlling forces of material nature, after you're pushed, pulled to perform certain activities, then you become implicated in the laws of karma. And you have to accept reactions. And these reactions are sometimes giving us happiness, but that happiness is terrible. Because the more you become happy, the more you become attached to the form of that happiness. Yehi samsparashuja bhoga dhuka jonaya evati atyanta vanta konte yanate shudamate. And as you become conditioned to that attachment to happiness, then it pains so terribly when it is taken away. And it is inevitable, it will be taken away. Dukalayam ashashvatam. Everything is temporary. So when we do things in the mode of goodness, we get happiness, and that happiness is the source of distress. Because you become conditioned, you become attached, and then you lose it. And if you engage in activities in the mode of passion and ignorance, greedy activities, or violent activities, then so much terrible suffering will come upon you. It will happen either today or tomorrow or the next day or the next life. That is for the laws of nature headed by Krishna to decide. But it will happen. Definitely. So this is a miserable condition. In any way you're under the laws of karma, you have to suffer today or tomorrow. And what are those sufferings? Adhyatmaka, Adhidaivaka, Adhibhotaka, miseries caused by one's own body. There are so many diseases, there are so many injuries, there is ultimately old age. The body is subjected to so much suffering. And miseries caused by one's mind, Adhyatmaka. Even if you're in the best, wonderful health, just Anything doesn't go your way because you are not the supreme controller. Things will not go your way. We see the biggest controllers of this material world, Hiranyakashipu. He controlled everything. But one little person, his Prahlad, didn't surrender. And his mind was totally disturbed. He could not enjoy anything. 
He worked so hard, he performed a hundred celestial years of tapasya just to enjoy the post of the king of the heavens. And he attained it. And he had so many armies diligently watching, and he was so, so keen and powerful in every way. But one little thing went wrong, and he could not enjoy anything. He simply was in anxiety and suffered. And Ravana was also very great. He, 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 he conquered Indra. He conquered everyone on this earth. No one could stand before him. But because Sita would not succumb to his desire, he was simply miserable. He could not think of anything else. So in this world it is like this, that we have insatiable desires. And however much we try to fulfill our desires, there's always something. And it always disturbs the mind. Somebody just, you hear somebody is speaking some rumor against you, and then your mind just becomes crazy with anxiety, whether it's true or not. In this way, Ariyatmaka and Aribhotika, miseries caused by other living beings. Sometimes mosquitoes bite you, you get malaria. Sometimes snakes bite you, you die. Huh? Sometimes people bite you with their harsh words and you, just, you suffer. Misery is caused by other living entities. And Adidayavaka, misery is caused by natural disturbances. Sometimes there are earthquakes, sometimes there are floods, sometimes there is heat, sometimes there is cold, sometimes drought. Uh, things are always changing by the arrangement of higher powers. So in this material nature we are all being controlled. And under this control we are all subjected to so much happiness and distress. But this happiness and distress is ultimately leading to death. It is ultimately leading to misery. So therefore, Krishna says, Manashashtanandriyani prakriti stani karashiti. Due to the mind's deranged condition of identifying itself with this material nature, it is under the control of nature and there's no way out of suffering. So we must understand what is the spirit soul, who we are, what is our constitutional nature, what is this material nature, how it is working and how we are under the influence and control of material nature. And who is the controller of nature? And who is the source of our own existence? Who is the cause of all causes? The cause of everything spiritual and everything material. That is Krishna. Sushukam karatam avyayam. When we understand this knowledge, we can be happy. And we just put ourselves under the control of Krishna, the cause of all causes. But unless you have knowledge of Krishna, you cannot actually take shelter of Krishna. Veda Vyas wrote so many wonderful scriptures. And Srila Prabhupada, our Guru Maharaj, he translated so many of those scriptures. Because unless we have a very, very deep and sublime understanding of Krishna, of the soul, and of material nature, we will not actually be able to genuinely surrender to Krishna. It is all a sentiment. Unless we understand the difference between the Supreme God and the demigods, unless we understand the difference between ourselves and the Supreme God, unless we understand the difference between trying to be happy through manipulation of material elements and surrendering to the Supreme God, 
we cannot be happy. We cannot solve the problems of life. So if you read the magazines and read the newspapers and go to the universities, every type of education, every type of literature practically is trying to teach us how to solve problems. But unfortunately, everyone has missed the real problem that we have forgotten our relationship with Krishna and how to revive that relationship with Krishna. That is the subject of Srimad Bhagavatam. And in order to understand this principle, we have to go to someone who knows. Srila Narada Muni is approaching his father, Lord Brahma. He was his material father in the sense that Narada took birth directly from Lord Brahma's body. He was also his spiritual father. He was his spiritual master. The spiritual master is the father of our soul. Ultimately, Krishna is the only father. But the spiritual master is the representative of that father. Therefore, we accept Guru as in the same way except God because we understand that our father is speaking to us through Gurudev. So Narada Muni is approaching Lord Brahma and he is explaining that you know you know what is this material nature because you're the one who's creating it all. From the very beginning, you created the different planets. You'd created the different living entities within the planets, not the living entities, but the various species of life in which the living entities are residing. You have done all of this. Therefore, you know how it's working. And you know where you're getting your power from. Therefore, Narada Muni to understand the solution to the problems of life and the purpose of life, he is not going to university. He's not going to uh, the prime minister or the governor. He's not going to a doctor or a lawyer. He's going to the Supreme Personality of God has represented him. Because Lord Brahma has the complete information. And he received knowledge from uh, Krishna directly. He revealed it to Narada. And Narada explained the same knowledge to Veda Vyas. And Veda Vyas explained it to Madhvacharya at the time when Madhvacharya went to Badrigashram and surrendered to Veda Vyas. And from Madhvacharya and went down through the line of his descendants. And gradually Madhavendra Puri, Ishwara Puri, the Lord himself came and accepted this knowledge in disciplic succession just to show that if you want real knowledge, it has to be from the authority. And Srila Prabhupada so kindly took this knowledge, he received from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Gaur Kishor Das Bhavati Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Maladevi Vyabhushan, Jagannathas Bhavati, Baladeva Yabhushan, Narottam Das Thakur, Srinivasa Chari, Rup Sanatan, Jiva Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Gopal Bhata Goswami. And then ultimately, Lord Chaitanya himself. So this is the system being revealed here in this wonderful 
chapter entitled The Cause of All Causes. Who is the cause of all causes? How he has created this world? Who is the living entities? How they are under the clutches of material existence? What is real knowledge? How to receive real knowledge? And how to apply that knowledge to our life? These are the most important forms of education. And other types of education, whether you are a dentist or a doctor or a businessman or a scientist, these may simply facilitate different ways by which we can express our understanding of the supreme truth into this world. This is called Daivi Varnashram. Varnashram Dharma means the Lord has created four Varnas and four Ashrams for the purpose of everyone according to their previous conditionings, according to their karma, according to the inclinations born of that, they perform a certain work. But that work should be done as an expression of one's devotion to God. Aham sarvasya prabhava mat sarvam prabhaitate iti mat bhava jante mam buddha bhava samanata. Krishna says, one who understands that he is the cause of everything worships him with all their hearts. So whatever we do, it should be a form of worship. This is knowledge. This is real science. How to dovetail our every thought, our every action, and our every word in the service of Krishna. And this is the culmination and the sign of someone who actually is learned in the reality and truth. Is there any questions? Yes. In nature, leaving being in Supreme Personality of Godhead, and we have to surrender to Supreme Personality of Godhead. We cannot surrender to material nature. If we surrender to material nature, then we will suffer. Although knowing this, Lord Brahma, who is the creator of this material nature, he also gets succumbed to this material nature. And uh, he also sometimes forget that he has to surrender to Supreme Personality of God rather than material nature. How can we be expected to be completely surrendered to the Supreme Personality of God constantly when Lord Brahma himself, who is the creator, cannot surrender constantly? Then what about we? Lord Brahma... <clears throat> pray to the Lord let me ever be the humble servant of your servants and thus he was given the post of Haridas Thakur and as Haridas Thakur Lord Brahma demonstrated how whoever we are we can always be free from the influences of Maya by constantly chanting the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. In other words, you have to give up the idea of all your posts and designations, whether you are Lord Brahma or a common stockbroker in the Bombay Stock Exchange. You have to give up your designations, your positions, and all these false conceptions, and you have to understand that whatever your situation, your true duty is to be the servant of the servant of the servant, and that is your only real position, your eternal position. And when Lord Brahma accepted the role of Haridas Thakur, even Maya surrendered to him and became his disciple, because he was constantly serving the devotees and chanting the holy names. But we should understand that when Lord Brahma appears to be in these situations, it is not like us. The particular Lord Brahma of this universe <coughs> is a Paramhamsa, a great Acharya. And the Lord wants to teach us lessons through him 
so sometimes puts him under the control of yoga maya. But he's not actually being bewildered by maya. He's actually being bewildered by Krishna. Just to teach us how to take shelter of Krishna. Just to teach us how, however great we are, we must sur- surrender to Krishna. There is no other escape from the problems of life. Maharaj Srimad Bhagavatam is uh, filled with wonderful pastimes of uh, great devotees who have been put into severe tribulations in their lives and uh, the whole glory of the Bhagavatam is to see how uh, they maintain their faith in the, in the trials and tribulations and they made progress. So oftentimes as neophytes when there are problems in devotees' life and then uh, uh, somebody asks us that I am suffering from so many problems, uh, please help me. So we, you know, we quote to them these uh, pastimes of uh, the Pandavas and uh, Prahlad, how they suffered and they still tolerated the suffering like that and so you also should. So oftentimes the problem which we all face is, we, our mind immediately tells us that it was okay for Prahlad to tolerate, it was okay for the Pandavas because they were so great, the Mahabhagavats. But as far as I am concerned, I am so weak, uh, I cannot possibly, you know, uh, you know, be with their standards right now. So the mind seems to be t- telling us uh, internally that uh, you know it's it's a hopeless situation. You can't really think like you know you can do anything like Prahlad, and we feel very despondent. And so the real shelter which is there in the stories is not obtained at that time, and we really need it most. It is a <coughs> it is your sincerity that will give you the correct understanding. If you are insincere, you will think that this great person can do it, but I am not so grace, so why should I try? <clears throat> but if you are sincere, you will understand that these great persons, they didn't have to do it. They are doing it only to teach us how to do it. There's no reason for Prahlad to suffer. But the Lord put him in that situation to teach us how to remember Krishna even in the greatest sufferings. So we must, we cannot imitate these great souls. That is correct. If you think that you you can do what they have done, that is called imitation. But if you sincerely, according to your capacity, try to follow in their footsteps, that is the way to salvation. Mahajano yena gata sapanita. We must follow in the footsteps of the great Mahajana. It may be very difficult, but if it was any less difficult, you would not have the proper opportunity for purification. You are going through what you need to go through. Everyone is going through what they have to go through to go back to Godhead, due to what they have done in the past and how they have incriminated themselves and contaminated themselves in the past. Even if you become a devotee, you have to pay the price to some extent of some austerity and some difficulty to cleanse yourself of all the dirt you have accumulated in the past. Because if that is not there, you will not take it seriously. If you're burned by fire, you don't touch fire again. But if if it doesn't hurt when you touch fire, then even if you read in the scriptures, and even if your guru, and even if your mother and father say, don't do not touch fire, you may still say, well, I did it and it didn't hurt so much, so let me do it again. Correct? That is our condition state. But if you really were burnt, very bad, and you're still suffering, then when you read in the scriptures and you hear from your guru and you hear from everyone else, do not touch fire, you'll think, somehow or other I will not touch fire. Hmm? 
So we have to suffer a lot to understand that we shouldn't sin. We shouldn't engage in materialistic activities. We shouldn't indulge in unnecessary sense gratification. We have to pay a high price just to become very serious about giving those things up. Hmm? So it is Krishna's mercy. When a parent punishes a child, the child always thinks, why so much? What have I done? Because the child is foolish. But the parent knows, the good parent knows, that this is required to make you serious. Sometimes students, they fail their exams. And then they have to go back a whole nother year to do their studies. Hmm? This is very difficult. A whole year I have to go study again, I failed. So the student may say, why is this school so, so strict on me? Why are they punishing me so much? Because if they don't do that, then you won't take your studies seriously. You have to understand what is the price. So this is a crude example. But we must know that what we've done and what we've gone through when we come to Krishna consciousness, <clears throat> Krishna knows what it takes to give us the determination and the frustration required to not do it again. And you may say, that Krishna is going to reveal me, he's relieved me from all sinful reactions, do not fear, so why I'm still suffering sinful reactions? In one sense, you're not suffering sinful reactions if you're trying to surrender to Krishna. <clears throat> if we're actually 100% surrendered to Krishna, then there's no problem. But until we come to that point of complete surrender to Krishna, Krishna is giving us the medicine we require so that we will not resort again to those sinful activities or those materialistic activities. We have to be thoroughly exhausted with any hope for material happiness in this world. And if we're not, well, we will again go to Krishna through material nature. You know, sometimes, just like Shamananda, he's a very active person. He has back problems. So Giriraj, Dr. Giriraj told him, you lay down and you do not get up for five days. Very difficult. To just lay on your back for five days is very difficult. He wants to dance, he wants to sing, so many things. Hmm? But that's what's required for his ailment. It is not a punishment. He did something wrong to make his body like this, so now he has to recover. So you give your patients so many times things that they don't like, but it is for their good. So when this Krishna is the supreme physician, he knows what medicine and he knows what type of regime we all need for our purification. And so that we do not again engage in these activities that have created so much suffering. So although when you surrender to Krishna, there's really no need for you to suffer the sinful reactions. But the problem is, will you go back and do it again? Then you're not surrendering to Krishna. So Krishna arranges a certain quantity of those sinful reactions to come upon you by his own will just to make you because he's within your heart. He knows you better than you know you. Just so you'll never do it again. Just so that you will ultimately come to the point of really surrendering to him. 
and the great souls teach us how to do it. And we must follow in their footsteps. Does that answer your question? Srila Prabhupada ki. Thank you very much.